All right. For today, it's a nice, bright day outside, and we're stuck in here again. Uh, for today, um, this is whatever housekeeping that needs to be done. Um, I don't think there's very much uh, for me to mention. Uh, uh, we were almost done with section 6.1, uh, so we're going to go ahead and finish that up. I think there was an example. Uh, there was one of the uh, quick checks left, plus uh, one of the... Uh, one example, and then the, the lecture questions. I wanted to give you guys maybe about a half hour to try out the lecture questions for yourselves um, to get through them. And uh, hopefully, I, ha I think we, we do have enough time to start and finish um, section 6.2, okay? Um, and eh, let's try it. I mean, I have a feeling Oh, come on. Oh, there we go. I have a feeling we might be able to. Now, this is our, this is ambitious. Whoa, what happened there? Come on. There we go. I don't know why I did that just now. So the ambitious goal is to maybe hopefully start 6.3. Um, and 6.3 has to do with inverse trigonometric functions uh, and how they work out, OK? Um, like I said, that, that's the ambitious part. Hopefully we get to it. Um, OK, so first thing, housekeeping, housekeeping. Housekeeping. Um, so your guys' exams are next up. I finally finished uh, exam uh, two for my other two classes. They are done. Um, so your guys' exams is next up on the chopping block, OK? Um, so hopefully by the end of today, I think I'll have those graded. Um, uh let's see what else i think we probably have actually we do we have about a month's worth of class left um that month's worth of class is going to be all chapter seven and eight um our final i believe i have it slated for the 20th Okay. Um, and then on the 13th, one week before, you guys have your exam three. Okay. Um, now, I know that because of the uh, online transition, um, our timeline has been a little funk funked up, right? Um, so uh, we'll keep going as we're going and see how the schedule plays out. Okay, um, if I don't get to section seven and, or sorry, if I don't get to chapter eight, uh, it's no big deal. Uh, chapter eight, you guys can sort of figure out on your own. Um, yeah, let me just leave it at that. Okay. Um, it's, the, yeah. Uh, chapter eight is really just two equations that you need to really just memorize. That's it. Um, and they're not very difficult to, they're probably the easiest, albeit they're long. Um, the proof for it is long, but the equations themselves and how you use them is really simple. I don't think you, you might need any more uh, than that. Okay. Um, let's see. What else for housekeeping? Hmm. I can't think of anything else for housekeeping. Um, if you guys have any questions for me, uh, I've been 
I've been doing a lot better at answering emails now, now that I can do stuff from home and I don't have to waste uh, two hours getting ready and driving to, to LMC. Okay. Um, yeah. Any questions from you guys? Is it bad that I use my daughter's chocolate bunny as creamer for my coffee? Is it bad that you use what? My daughter's chocolate bunny for creamer for my coffee because I ran out. <laughs> I don't think so. Heck no. <laughs> Do it. Do it. That's actually a good right. idea. I should drink some coffee right now. Oh my God. That's so good. Where's the chat box? She was so mad. <laughs> <laughs> that's a sin. Oh man. I usually have a, a creamer at um, at LMC at my office. And every once in a while, one of the instructors comes in to my office and is like, hey, dude, I'm going to use your creamer. I really need a cup of coffee. I'm like, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. So I, it's a bad day when I don't have creamer. All right. Uh, Besides that, I think that's all we're going to try to do today. I think this is uh, uh, for what we are trying to do here. I think this is uh, as much as we can finish for today. Uh, we're going to be taking it pretty nice and slow for the next maybe two, three weeks. Um, yeah, okay. All right, so let me do a quick recap of um, the quick check number one, yeah? So, come on, okay. Something's going wrong with my stuff, yo. Let me, uh, For some reason, my computer is really slow. Let me see what's on. I don't need. Nope, nope, nope. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why it's doing that. Okay. All right. So let me do a quick recap of um, of uh, this right here of quick check number one the problem that we did before okay so what we have here uh, let me turn off my camera am i glitching out to people just want to know um not really but not really no, yeah a little okay bit. okay cool just wanted to know it seems a little weird that uh um my computer's like it's tweaking, man. It's tweaking. All right. So let me go ahead and start covering this one. Um, so we had this function right here, right? F of X is equal to three sine two X plus two pi minus one. And we needed to provide the four things, right? The amplitude, period, phase shift, and vertical shift, and then try to graph it, right? So, um, the amplitude we got pretty easy. That is always, whoa. The amplitude's pretty easy to get. Really? Oh, this is great. I wouldn't be surprised if it just collapses on me right now. Yeah, I think it's gonna crash right now. Oh my God. Oh, okay, that works. Okay, so the amplitude was easy. That's always that front number up front, that three, okay? So that's how we get that. Um, the next thing we needed to do is find our period. We needed this equation right here, right? Uh, this one was pretty easy, so that's why we had to write it in this manner right here. So we can split up... Uh, whatever B, A, C, and D are. Um, 
So the period is going to be the 2 pi divided by b. Okay. Uh, the b in this case was my 2. Right. So we had to do 2 pi divided by b. So 2 pi divided by 2 gives us our uh, period of pi. Okay. There's a phase shift to the left. So there is, in order to find the phase shift, right, uh, we needed to grab the original function, right, and rewrite it this way. Right? And the outcome of that was this. So it was left by pi, okay? So the same rule that you remember from chapter one, the one where uh, if it's negative, you move it toward the positives, and if it's positive, you move it toward the negative, right? That same thing still works. So in the first one, it says uh, it's C over B. Mm -hmm. So you would put two pi over two? Two, yep. And that got you, oh, you pi. That gave you pi. Yeah. Okay, cool. Got it? Yeah. Okay. So then that's how we got our, our phase shift, right? We had to rewrite it in this form right here. Okay. If we hadn't done that, we wouldn't be able to get our phase shift. So uh, one of the things that you should do at the very beginning of any of these problems is to switch it into that form. Okay. And then the last one was the midline, minus one. Okay. And that one is the easiest part of them all. That's just the tail end. That's your D. Okay. Wait, could you and explain then, how to get the, the period again? I'm sorry. Uh, the period is this right here, the 2 pi divided by B. 2 pi divided by B. Yep. So it's, the period is the, um, oh, wait. I'm waiting. Pi divided by B. Oh, okay, so you just put the 2 pi over 2, and then you got pi. So the period is pi? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So using these three things right here, right, four things, those four things right there, we're able to draw our graph, right? So we know our amplitude is 3. So uh, once we have our midline, right, once we have this thing, we know that uh, – our graph, whatever we choose, right, is going to go up by three from the midline and down by three from the midline. So if our midline, so notice how this works out. Here's our midline right here. Let me actually move this over. Here's our midline right here, right? That's our midline, okay? So we know that it's supposed to bounce up by three from that line and down by three for that line. So one, two, three, so that's why we have that point up there. And then one, two, three, that's that point down there. Got it? Yep. Okay, one period has to fit into pi, right? So in this case, since we're messing around with sine, right? Um, since we're messing around with sine, uh, we need the sine graph, we need the squiggle. Right, so one one entire squiggle needs to fit in between uh, pi, right? But we also have the phase shift by pi, so we have to move everything down by pi. So that's why we decided to start there, right? So then, from that point right there to that point right here to the origin, that was going to be that distance right there is pi. So we need one squiggle in there. And that's where we got all the rest of the points. So we know that it starts in the middle, climbs up, comes back down, goes down even further, comes back up, goes up, middle, down, middle, up, middle, down, middle and then last one let's just do for kicks and giggles up it is minus pi yep
So what points are on the x-axis? That's what I'm having trouble understanding. Ah, oh. Ah, okay. I see the, I see the, I see the issue that people are having. If my thing decides to work. Okay, actually continue this line really quick. So let me, let me make the x axis a little more uh, Okay, so let me draw all the way across. So this is still our x-axis. And this is our y-axis. Oh, it's down there. So now, let me actually get rid of this. So this value right here, that is going to be negative pi. Right? This right here we know is the origin, so that's going to be zero, right? What's this value right here in between pi and zero? Any guesses? Negative one half pi. Right, negative one half pi, so negative pi over two. Right? What is the point? In between those two? Um, negative pi over four. Right. That does not look nice. There you go. Negative pi over four. Got it? Okay. So and that means each one of these tick marks go by pi over four. So this is pi over four, uh, pi over two, uh, three pi over four, pi. So here's positive pi, right? And every four is another pi. So one, two, three, four, here's two pi. So on and so forth. So Edlin, yay or nay? Yeah, okay, let me explain it again. Okay, let me do it one more time. So from here, come on. From here to here, the distance between those two points, that's pi, right? Okay, what is halfway between? That's uh, pi over two, right? And since, in, since it's in the negative direction, that's going to be negative pi over two. Right? Okay. Halfway between that and that, we've got another tick mark. So it's halfway between pi over two and zero. So that's going to be negative pi over four since it's in the negative direction. So that means every one of these tick marks, let me actually draw it in a thinner, come on, there we go. I'm gonna draw it in a thinner pink. So this right here is pi over four, pi over two, three pi over four, and then we have pi, right? And then that same thing happens over and over again. So this is gonna be, this right here is five pi over four, six pi over four, seven pi over four, eight pi over four reduces down to two pi, right? 
and so on and so on and so on. Okay. So I think what might have been tripping everybody out was that blue line that's actually the midline, which is not actually the x-axis. It's a uh, part of the graph itself. I think that might have been tri tripping people out. All right, you guys. Something's going on with my tablet. I've never really seen it act this slow before. Like it's lagging everywhere, left and right. Okay. Um, how about this, to give everybody a little bit more practice, I think I'm gonna have everybody, I'm gonna break you guys out into your groups. Everybody's gonna try number, uh, which one is this? The second one, let me just put it that way. Everybody's gonna try out the second one. Um, but I want you guys to do it in groups, okay? If you already did it, great. Maybe you can uh, show your uh, classmates how you guys did it, okay? Yes, the four is y equals. So actually, let me before I go and send you guys up back into your group, um, into your breakout groups. Let me go back to that one. So the minus four. So remember how this worked out, right? Uh, The midline was negative one, and the amplitude was three, right? So our graph had, had to bounce from, <coughs> from the negative one line, right? From y equal negative one, it had to go up three and down three, right? So from negative one up three, that was up to two. That's how we got our two, right? And from negative one down three, that's where we got our negative four. Okay. So yes, it does relate to the Y. Okay. All right, I'm gonna send everybody into their groups. So I want everybody to try uh, the second, uh, what is this, uh, the second quick check really quick. Uh, if you already did it, that's cool. If not, uh, Ask around. I'm pretty sure there's probably going to be somebody in your group that's already done it. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and give everybody some practice. Okay. I'll touch him with the name. Can you try? Huh? Can you try? Yeah. Okay. 
What? A little light at it. Did you eat?
All right, you guys, thumbs up, thumbs down. I have a question. Okay. So for the phase shift, is it shift left by two since the period is two? Uh, hold on, let me take a look. Because for the period, I have two pi over b, which is <laughs> two pi over pi. And then. Yep, so the, your period up. is two. Your period is two. But your phase shift is not two. So if you look up above, um, I think it's on page two or three. Let me see. Yeah. <clears throat> it's on page three. Uh, the phase shift is that C divided by B, whatever that is. C divided by B, okay. So you have to do uh, the C, which in your case is pi over four, divided by pi. Okay, hold on. Wait, where did it go? Okay. You guys, it seems like you guys are still cranking it out. So I'm going to let you guys keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to check another group out. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Oh, pretty good. Mm, pretty good. Okay. Is the, is the amp two or negative two? Is what? The amp. The amp? Oh, the amplitude? Yeah, the amplitude. So the amplitude is technically it's just the, the it's just A. Mm. Right? It's not the positive or negative. The positive or negative just gives you the flip. Mm -hmm. Right? So your amplitude is just two in this. Okay. Case. Yeah. So the negative, does that determine if you go down first then? Exactly. Okay. That's all the positive and negative does. It determines, it determines your flip. It it tells you if you should start up and go down or start down and go up. That's it. Got it. Okay. Okay. Wait, I don't. I don't know why I asked that. I I was literally doing this problem like on Monday. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we only got through. It was actually a good a good thing that you guys uh that we only did number one mm. so that we can do number two today it actually ended up being a good refresher for everybody mm -hmm. yeah okay i'm gonna go check out another group okay <laughs> okay thumbs up thumbs down So I know how to find um, like the amplitude period phase shift and all that, but I think graphing it is what is harder for me. Right. So I know like um, what is it? sometimes the C over B is sometimes has, sometimes has a pi in it and then sometimes it's just a numerical value. So that's what, like, I don't know what to do with that. With like B. So I would say like uh, divvy up your graph, like it's, find the start point, find the, 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 the point where the first squiggle is going to happen, right? Where it's supposed to start. And that's and the way B, you do right? Huh? And that would be uh, B? That wouldn't be B. That would be the, so you need to find out how far up and down to move, mm -hmm. right? So for yours, how far, for, for this one, how far up or down do you have to go? Um, for the amplitude. Uh, let, let me actually start with it. Where's your midline? Oh, the midline is at positive two. So positive two is the midline. And then how far over left or right do you have to go? I got uh, one over four. 
Right. Okay. Okay, so now, you know that your graph, right, the entirety of your graph, what it, whichever one you're going to use, so in this case, it's going to be cosine, right? Mm -hmm. Has got to start somewhere. It has got to start exactly at uh, negative one fourth, comma two. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right. How far is your period? Um. Uh, two. Two. So, from one fourth. To where is your first squiggle? To two? Ah, uh, not to two. To. Uh, is it to pi? Not to pi. So the period is two, right? You start at one negative one fourth, right? Uh -huh. And your period is two. So where does the first squiggle stop? Wouldn't it be at two? It would not be at two. Right. It'd be at, wait, what? Oh my goodness. I know, I know. So, okay, so it starts at one, or negative one fourth? It starts at negative one fourth and it has to go all the way to where? Um, which is a period, right? Right, one period. So it'd be two. Uh uh. uh so the period is two, uh -huh. right? But if you start at negative one fourth, where should you stop? I'll give you I, I'll give you a little bit of time to think about it. Let me go check on the last group and then I'll call everybody back. Okay. Okay. Let me see. What's the last group that's left? Ah, okay. Thumbs up, thumbs down. I have it up until the graphing part. So what you get for all four parts? For amp, I got two. For period, I got also two. Mm -hmm. And phase shift, I have uh, one fourth to the left. To the left, okay. And line is also two. Yep. <clears throat> but then after that. But then after that, yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Uh, your graph is going to be shifted up how much? Two by two right uh -huh. and you're going to be shifted over by how many one fourth one fourth to the left right uh -huh. okay um you bounce up to what and down to what up two and down to two up two down two so what's the highest your graph can go two not to two the highest Uh, the highest your graph can go, what is it? And what's the lowest your graph can go? So the amplitude is two, right? Yeah. From the midline. Uh huh. Right. So yeah. that means you're going how high up and how high down. So the four. Down. Right. So you're going up to four. Uh huh. Right. And down to what? Is it negative four? Not negative four. So the midline is two. <coughs> right. And you have to go up and down from two by two, right? Does that make sense? 
Negative so two. you go up to four and then down to what? Negative two. Not negative two. Zero. Zero. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if you're, if you're at two, right, the amplitude bounces two up and two down, right? Uh -huh. From uh, the midline. So then if it's at oh, two, okay. bounce up two is four and then bounce down two is zero. Okay. <laughs> Got it? Yeah. Okay. okay. Have you tried to graph it yet? Or is that where you're just like, yeah, that's, that. that's for I, I put the midline and then after that I was like, okay, what do I do okay. now? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Let me call people back because I think everybody's having a problem with the with the graphing part. They're like, I don't know, I don't know. Okay. Okay. So how many people actually got down to putting a graph on paper. Nobody, huh? I think I went through all the groups and everybody's like, yeah, I got all the good stuff, but I have no idea what to do with the gr with the graphing. How many people we got? Let's see. Okay. Okay, so let's try this out. Let's try this out. So the first thing that I think I told everybody to do from the from the previous problem, right? I'm gonna rewrite this as negative two cosine of pi x plus, so I need to do c divided by, let me actually do it over here, c divided by b, right? In our case, it's going to be pi over 4 divided by pi, and that reduces down to 1 fourth. So this is going to be pi plus 1 fourth plus 2. So now we get to use this thing. <clears throat> okay. So from here, the amplitude we know is two, right? And that we got from that right there. Okay, period. The period is going to be the t equal two pi divided by b which in our case, b is pi, so it's going to be 2 pi divided by pi, since there's a pi on top and the pi on bottom, we get equal to 2. Wait, where'd you get the 2 pi from? So the period for sine and cosine is always 2 pi divided by b, so whenever we talk about sine and cosine, that's the formula that we need for uh, the period. Okay. Got it? No. Yeah. Uh, phase shift. Boom. Yeah? So it's going to be one fourth to the left. Since this is a positive, right? Since that's a positive, uh, we switch it to the negatives, right? And if it was a negative, we move it toward the positive. So it still works out the same way that you remember from back in the day. Got it? 
And then last, uh, midline. And that is that plus two at the end there. So y is equal to two. So everybody had this problem now. They had all the goodies. They had that this, 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 and this, right? But they couldn't graph it, okay? Which is okay. I mean, it's a lot of stuff to keep a track of. So let's start with, I usually like to start with the midline and the phase shift. So remember how I, uh, um, I usually like to do at least trig ones. Put these two down first. How about we put one, two, one, two. How about we do it in this order, right? Actually, we can do it backwards, three and four. I'll show you guys how, what I mean by that. Okay, so our midline is at plus two. So that right there is two, okay? And we have a phase shift of one fourth to the left. So that means, I'm gonna say this, that value right there is negative one fourth. So our point, our graph, whatever it is, starts there, okay? My period is two. So from one fourth, I need to go from negative a fourth, I need to go two over, and that's supposed to be one squiggle. Right? So where is that? Where do I stop? Where over here do I stop to make my one squiggle? Right? So if I do negative one fourth plus my period two, that's gonna be one. Actually, let me, let me not actually do the math for it. One fourth, negative one fourth plus eight over four. Correct? So this goes over to seven over four. So it goes to one and three quarters. Okay, now, since one of these was a, uh, one square was one quarter, I'm just gonna start counting out. So one, two, three, four, right? So that's gonna be, uh, so this is one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths, this is one, right? Five, six, seven, Eight. So this is going to be two, but we only needed to go to seven fourths. So I'm going to put seven over four. So we know that our graph goes from here, right, to here. Which means one, two, three, four. This is going to be our mid point, the middle of our graph, right? And these are gonna be our quarters. So how did you know where the graph is gonna end? That's this thing. That is this right here. And you got so, that by using the period? Right, so I did, I did the phase shift, right? Mm -hmm. plus a period. And that's how you get where it starts and ends? Well, the phase shift, right? Just, just number two, that thing, mm -hmm. tells you where it starts, right? Yeah. Because that tells you I need to start at one fourth to the left of the org, right? Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. The next question was, where does it stop, right? Mm -hmm. And that's where uh, this thing comes in the period. So that's why 
you just had the phase shift. And then you huh? got seven fourths. So you just got out of them and got seven fourths, and that's where it stops. And that's where it stops, right. Okay. So if you take a look, right, the distance from here to here is two. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So my period satisfied. Oh, okay. So the period is just telling you the 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 length of the the length of one squiggle. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, my amplitude is two, right? So that mm -hmm. means I go all the way up to what? Over one. Uh uh. So the amplitude, how how far up does my graph go and how far down does my graph go? It goes up to and it goes down to? Right. So what's the highest point it gets to? Um, from the zero or from the two? From the two. So it would go up two, right? Right. So how far up does my graph go? Four. Right. So it'll go up to four, and then it'll go down to where? To zero. Right. Down to here to zero, right? What kind of graph are we using? We're using sine or cosine in this case? Cosine. Cosine. So we need the cosine graph. And does it start down below or up top? Down below. Right. Why? Because it's negative, right? Yup. Because it's negative. So we know our graph. So I'm going to put the five important points, right? So that's the reason why I divided it up like this. So one point's right there. Next one's right here. Next one's up here. Next one's right there, and last one is right there. So how do you know where to put these points? Like, how are you doing this? That's this thing. That's what we were doing right here. Notice we had to combine all of this stuff together, right? Mm -hmm. So I, actually, let me... So let me actually put these points in a nice shade of pink. So remember these five points, right? Those five points. Let me zoom back out really quick. Let me go back to sine and cosine from the very beginning. If my thing ever loads, there we go. Okay. There we go. So actually, let me go over here. 